By the way, select the network manager and make sure you add the auto create player and select the spawn information to have the Iron Man prefab because that's the one that's going to get spawned. And then the register spawnable prefab, you guys should already know we've done that before, would be the uh, Firebolt. So there's two of them, the Firebolt and the Firebolt Blue. Click on plus again and add the Firebolt Blue. And then also the Spider-Man character that we want to spawn. Click on plus and locate the Spider-Man prefab. Here it is. Okay, these are the three. Save that and now let's open the uh, scene, the Iron Man scene. Open scene and locate the scene Iron Man. Open. Now let's get rid of the uh, HUD and the uh, network manager that uh, come by default. Select the network manager and remove the uh, network HUD first. Very important, otherwise it's going to give you an error. So remove the HUD and then remove the network manager. Reason why we did that is that because we're going to add the network manager main menu. So drag and drop the main menu script to the network manager. As soon as you do this, you'll see that it appears here. So make sure you select the offline mode to be the main menu, the online scene to be the scene Iron Man, and then the player prefab to be the Iron Man prefab. Let's keep on going. The list of objects to spawn, we just did that. So you should know Firebolt, Firebolt Blue, and then the Spider-Man. I'm going faster because it's very similar here. Okay, and save this. Now let's edit the network main, the network manager main menu so that it takes into account this. And we're going to add a disconnection so that we can disconnect from the game. Um, right here, I'm going to add a new method and call it disconnect. So public void disconnect. And what this would do is disconnect this from the game. And it's very simple. It's just network manager dot singleton dot here that would be stop host there you go open and close the parenthesis all right and save that now something important is that i need to connect this to a button and i'm going to do that right now so on the button going back to unity i'm going to add a, in the canvas game object and i'm going to add the button so ui button I'm going to remove the text inside of that button, right click delete. And then I'm going to position the button in the top left corner. So select the, um, the, the diagram here and click on Alt and select the top left position and then on Shift for, the, for the, uh, the anchor to the top left as well. As you can see, it went here. Now I'm going to change the image from UI Sprite to the button disconnect. Here it is. I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm going to make this to 200 by 50. All right, that will do just fine. And now I'm going to connect this. Um, on the uh, on click, click on plus, select the, um, the uh, in the scene, we're going to locate the uh, network manager. Here it is. And select the um, network manager main menu script and locate the disconnect method. Here it is, select it. Here we go. All right, so we do have the disconnection, but now let's click on file and click on uh, build settings and what we want is the main menu to appear first so drag and drop it first right put it before and now it's zero so we got to do something here between zero and one so i'm going to save this so save that and go back to the script and here what we're going to to, to do here on level was loaded so if the level is zero then we do this else else it's not zero so guess what we do we're going to uh, do that for the disconnect button. So I'm going to select that and paste it and do the button disconnect here. All right, button disconnect. Make sure you have renamed yours, right? That's very important, button disconnect. And here that wouldn't be join game, that would be disconnect. All right, so save that. Make sure you have the button disconnect written correctly, go back to Unity and make sure that it's called button disconnect. Mine just says button, so I'm going to rename it to button disconnect. All right, now save this. As an example here, I'm inside of Unity. I go to File, Build Settings, and here, if I want to develop for iOS, I need to select iOS and switch platform. Once this is done, you have to go back to the Git repository 
and make sure you commit your changes to the Git repository and um, the um, cloud will pick it up automatically. All right, back to the cloud. So default iOS on the master and then choose the latest version of Unity and auto build, leave it on for now. Then, um, by the way, the auto build, every time you just push to the repository, it will automatically try to build it. Next, put your credentials and, um, uh, okay, the name is already in use. Yeah, I have to change this too because I already used that. So uh, test iOS. Um, by the way, here you, you will be asked your bundle ID, which is the one that you're using in your iTunes Connect account and also the one that you're using within Unity. And inside Unity, under build settings, again, you go to player settings and then here locate the Apple and you will see that you have your product name, company name, and then um, use your uh, bundle ID inside of other settings. You see the bundle identifier here. That's the one you need to have the same one here and there as well inside of the cloud. So I'm just going to paste it. They need to match. Now the Xcode version, the latest is usually good. Then you need to add your provisioning profiles and you get these provisioning profiles from the developer center right here. Here they are. You can download them. All right. So make sure you select yours and click on download. That's how you would do. Same thing for the provisioning. You would go to, um, to provisioning profile. You click on one and download and then you can use them there as well. OK. All right. Oh, by the way, also they are asking for the um, for the P12 certificate and the password to create that. You have to go to your keychain. Or um, yes, so let me do it here. Keychain. Access. Now, that's only if you have a Mac here, but there's other ways to do that, even though you may not have a Mac and you can select any of your distributioning profile and do file export. That's how you would do it. And that would create your P12. As you can see, it says P12. All right. OK. And then you just basically follow the steps right here. Add your credentials and next and it will build. That's it. At this point, this is what you would do for iOS. Now, there's not just iOS. You can go back to uh, the project home and locate other builds. There's uh, plenty of others. Um, you can also do it for um, for Android as well. And the process is very similar. Um, you just have to uh, to follow the cloud build. And um, and as you can see, they will always ask you for um, for your uh, your provisioning profiles and identifiers. All right.